thousands of people that are searching, they, <coughs> they tend to overcook the poem. I tell people to, to, to read the book and then study the poem four, five, six, eight, ten times. And then go back and read the book again slowly, looking for hints in, in the text that will help you solve the clues in the poem. That's the way to do that. Yeah. But you have to know where to start. If you don't have the starting point, you don't have anything. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pragmatic pragmatic person. And when I look back at, at the career that I had in the art business and the Air Force, I said, you know, I've had my share, so maybe I'm being called out. And I accepted that, but I said, I've had so much fun, particularly in Santa Fe, buying all these Indian things and ancient Egyptian and you name it, I had all of them in my gallery. I said, I've had so much fun collecting these things. If I've got to go, I'm just going to take it with me. As a matter of fact, Ralph Lauren came in my house one day. He was a good collector. And he saw a, a bonnet that I had hanging on my wall. It was, had, it was a crow medicine bonnet, had ermine skins on it and, mm. and antelope arms and he said I want to buy that thing I said I don't want to sell it he said you have so many of them he said you can't take it with you you know what I said to him then I'm not going <laughs> and you know I started thinking about that later and I said well you know if I gotta go why don't I just take this stuff with me and I got the idea subject but that night I started thinking about that who says I can't take it with me why do I have to live by everybody else's rules if I'm going to die of cancer, I'm going to take some stuff with me. And I made up my mind. So I bought this beautiful little treasure chest, 10 inches by 10 inches and 6 inches high. Wonderful Romanesque thing. An antique scholar told me that it was probably Romanesque, 11th or 12th century. Maybe it held a Bible or a book of days. But it was one, wonderful. Other line of business, which is Native American artifacts, is the coyote trickster who lies to bring you the truth. So if you ultimately arrive at the truth, does it matter how you got there? But you know, all societies have had fetishes. You know, they're called different things, but with, with American Indians, uh, there are a lot of different fetishes. And the fetish is not worth anything unless you believe in it. But if you believe in it, it can be awesome. Yeah, yeah. The most primitive tribes, even in New Guinea and, and the Amazon jungle, they all have fetishes of one kind or another. Very important. And, and all, all religions today have fetishes. They don't call them that, but that's what they are. And it's important that we believe. And my academic work was in shamanism. So if you're in the Amazon and the sorcerer, the medicine man, comes around, plays his rattle and chants, and then pulls a feather out of your ear saying the enemy sorcerer put it there and then you are well, does it matter? whether it is objectively true or not, if you are well, that's the it goal. It doesn't matter what it is, it only matters what you think it is, yeah. and what it can do for you, and what you can offer with it. Very important. What do we have? The, what do we leave behind? You know, as long as they say, as long as someone remembers us and says a prayer for us, we live that long, but that's just a couple of generations. Well, people, people, your listeners will say, well, some of them will say, well, you know, I don't have anything to leave behind, but they do. They need to write their memoirs. Mm -hmm. Even if they write it out in pencil and paper, send it to the Library of Congress, date it and sign your name and, uh, and put everything you know about yourself in that because 100 or 500 years from now, that's going to be an important document. Yeah, well, look at, you know, the, the stuff from medieval times, what they had for breakfast. That's right, and we, and, we all have yeah. so, much, so much to offer. And that treasure chest is, a, is part of a historic doc, document that, I mean, the Rosetta Stone was buried 2,000 years. And I said in my book that, don't you know the guy that carved that thing is proud of himself 2,000 years later that it was found? Yeah. So that's why I look at that. What I tell people to do, if, you, if you're really serious about looking for the treasure, get the thrill of the chase and, and read it. And then go back and read the poem over and over and over again. And then go back and read the book again, but slowly, looking and looking at every little abstract thing that, that might catch up in your brain. That might be a hint to help you with the clues. Any part of some is no better than no part of any. I don't think that'll help you much, but...